Okay, so when you're ready to get your web hosting, we're gonna head on over to bluehost.com. Now this is the web hosting company we're gonna be using in this course, uh, but you're more than welcome to use whichever one you want. There's literally thousands of them out there. Now if you decide not to go with Bluehost, that's perfectly fine. The setup for your web hosting account might be a little bit different, but once we actually get into WordPress, everything is gonna be exactly the same. So everything I do, you'll be able to do as well. So once you're on bluehost.com, you can start off by clicking the green get started button. Now this is gonna ask you to choose a plan. Now there's four different plans that you can choose from. There's the basic plus, choice plus, and the pro. The main difference between the basic plan and the rest of the plans is that with the basic, you are only allowed to create one website. Whereas if you went with either of these plans, you can pretty much make as many websites as you want on that single plan. The other main difference is that with the basic plan, you are only allowed 50 gigabytes of storage. Now these are both things to consider because if you think that at any point you're gonna wanna create another website, then I would definitely just go with one of the plus plans. Now as far as storage goes, 50 gigabytes still is a lot of space. However, um, if you think that you're gonna have a very large website full of images, videos, uh, and just content in general, then I would maybe consider upgrading to the plus plan. Now the differences between these three plans is that they throw in a bunch of add-ons. Now a lot of these add-ons are not necessary simply because you can get free WordPress plugins that will do the same exact thing. So I wouldn't worry too much about all this extra stuff. If I were you, I would look more into the basic or the plus. So we are actually gonna go with the basic plan. On this next page, this is where you're gonna decide on your domain. Now, if you already have one, you can go ahead and enter it into the box here and click next and they'll help you set it up. But let's say we're brand new to this and we don't have a domain name yet. So go ahead and enter in the domain that you want here. And this is where you're gonna choose the domain extension, which we covered earlier. Uh, personally, I recommend going with .com simply because it's the most recognized and trusted domain extension, but feel free to choose whichever one you want. Once you click next, it's either gonna tell you the domains available or it's gonna tell you to pick a new one. So let's go ahead and try it out. As you can see, the domain websitemakers.com is available. So on this next page, this is where you're gonna fill out your account information. So just make sure that all of this information is correct before moving on to the next section. So in the next section here, you're gonna be able to choose the length of your plan. And as you can see, the longer you sign up for the cheaper price you're gonna get. So if you're just looking to try it out for a year, 495 is still a great deal compared to a lot of web hosting companies. So we're actually gonna go with the 12 month plan. So it brought our price down to 5940 and we get our domain registration for free, which is our domain name. And then we also get a free SSL certificate. Now the SSL certificate is this icon here up in the corner. This basically lets all your website visitors know that your website is safe and secure. So any information they were to enter on your website would be 100% safe. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the package extras. Now by default, they're gonna have a couple of these already selected for you, but most of these you really don't need, like CodeGuard Basic and SiteLock Security, because again, there are free WordPress plugins out there that will do these same things. Now, if there was one package extra that I recommend, it's domain privacy protection. And that's because it's gonna protect all of your personal information that's tied to your domain. So whenever somebody registers a new domain name, their personal information, like their name, their address, their phone number, is actually tied to that domain. And that information is then uploaded into a database so we can kind of keep track of who owns all the domain names out there. Now when you buy domain privacy protection, it pretty much protects all of your personal information and doesn't allow it to be put into that database. Instead, what it's gonna show is the company that you are actually registered under. So in this case, it would show Bluehost's information rather than our personal information. So you can read a little more about that here, um, but I do definitely recommend signing up for domain privacy protection and that's really the only extra that you need. So as you can see here, our total is 71.28 and we've saved almost $50.
So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is your payment information. So go ahead and fill all that out. So once you've filled all this out, you can go ahead and come down to the bottom, read the terms and conditions, select the box, and then click Submit. Okay, so after you've signed up, you should be brought to this page where it's gonna ask you to create a password for your new account. Now, if for whatever reason you aren't automatically brought to this page, go ahead and check your email because sometimes they'll email the link to create your password. Um, so yeah, check for it there if you're not automatically brought here. So now go ahead and create your password and be sure to write it down because this is what's gonna be used to log into your Bluehost account. So if you ever have issues with your website and you need to get up with support, you'll have to log into this account. All right, so now that we've created our password, go ahead and click the next button. Congratulations, you've created your web hosting account. So let's go ahead and log in. So after logging in, they're going to immediately help you set up your first website with the domain that you chose during signup. And this is exactly why I love using Bluehost because there's no extra steps involved. You don't have to install WordPress. They pretty much do it all for you. So as soon as you log in, they're gonna ask you to pick a WordPress theme for your website, which is basically the overall appearance of your website. Now this theme can be changed once we get into WordPress, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose now, but we'll cover more about themes in a few minutes. So go ahead and look through all the themes that they have here and choose one you like. And now it's gonna start setting up our website. All right, as you can see, WordPress has installed successfully. So congratulations, your website is now created under the domain that you chose. So before you go any further, please make note that this is your username and your password for logging into your WordPress website. You're gonna need this information every time you wanna make a change to your website. Now in a minute, I'm actually gonna show you how to change this password to something you would normally use. Um, but for now, just make sure that you write it down. Now there's two links here. There's one directly to your website and then the second link is strictly for you, the admin of the website. But let's start off by just going to our website right now. And as you can see, it's basically gonna tell you that it's not quite finished. So you could either click on this button that says admin login, which is gonna help you log into WordPress, or you can come up here and type wp-admin and then press enter. And they basically do the exact same thing. So now it's gonna ask for your username and password. So we're gonna go back here and we'll take our username, we'll copy it. We'll come back and paste it here. And then we'll go back and grab our password and do the exact same thing. So now we're ready to log in. So let's go ahead and check this box and log in. So this is the WordPress dashboard, and this is where you're gonna be doing all the customization of your website. Now there's a lot of pop-ups here, so let's go ahead and exit out of a bunch of these. Just kind of clean things up a little bit. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the password to our WordPress account to make it a little easier to remember. So let's go down to where it says users and go to all users. And as you can see, this is my account here. So let's click on edit. And once you're on this page, just scroll all the way down to the bottom and where it says new password, generate password, go ahead and click this button. And we're actually gonna change it. So just highlight and then click backspace. And let's change this to a password that we're more familiar with and we're gonna remember. And then we'll click update profile. And this is gonna change that really weird password to one that we're gonna remember. All right, so now that we have our account set up and we have our password changed, let's go back to home. So now that you've purchased your web hosting and you've installed WordPress, now it's time to learn how to start using it to create websites. All right, so now that we are in the WordPress dashboard, let's go take a look at our brand new website. So the first thing we're gonna do is come up here to the top left and we're just gonna click on visit site. So this is what your website is gonna look like by default. It's extremely bland, and there just really isn't a whole lot going on. But we're gonna quickly change this. So let's go back into our dashboard by coming up here to the top left, and we're gonna click on Dashboard. Now let's go down to where it says Appearance, and then we're gonna click on Themes. So these are all the themes that we currently have installed on our website. It's not that we're using all of these themes, but these are the ones that we have installed to choose from. 
So if you want to install a new theme, we can come down here where it says add new theme. And now we can search through thousands of WordPress themes. So the one we're going to be using in this course is called Astra. Now you can use any theme you want, but Astra is one of my personal favorites just because it allows you to import an entire website in just a matter of minutes. So we're going to come up here where it says search themes. We're going to type in Astra. And this is the one we're looking for right here. So we're going to come down to where it says install. We're going to click on it. And once it's done, we're going to click on activate. And there we go. Now we have Astra installed and it's activated on our website. So if you want, you can go take a look at what your website looks like now. We'll just open this up in a new tab. And as you can see, it changed. It looks a little bit different now, but now we're going to make it look even better. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. And now we're going to go down to plugins and click add new. And now let's go to search plugins and let's type in Elementor. One you're looking for is Elementor Website Builder. So go ahead and click on install and then just activate it. So Elementor is basically just a page builder that allows you to easily customize your website by dragging and dropping different things. So now we're just gonna install one more plugin. So let's go back to add new. And then we're gonna go back up to search and type in starter template. And the one you're looking for is this first option right here. So install it and then activate. All right, so now we have our theme installed. We have Elementor installed. And lastly, we have the starter templates plugin installed. So this is where we're gonna completely change the look of our website. Where it says starter templates, go ahead and click on C library. And now it's gonna ask you to choose a page builder. And that's exactly why we just installed Elementor. So go ahead and click on Elementor. And the cool thing about this plugin is it gives you the option to choose a template that you can import directly into your website. So then all you have to do is go in, customize a few things and really make it your own website. So what we're going to start off by doing is come up to the search bar and we're going to open up this drop down box. So this allows you to search and filter through different categories of templates. So if you're looking for one for business, a blog, or maybe an e-commerce site, you can search for that here. Now, the other option here is to search through just the free templates or you can look at some of the paid ones. Now, I'm not gonna be paying for one today, so I'm just gonna search through the free ones. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that here. And as you can see, they have a ton of free templates that you can choose from. So go ahead and scroll through and find one you like. I think for this course, we're gonna be using the roofing services template. So once you've found one, go ahead and click on it. So now you can actually scroll through and see exactly what this website will look like. So this is what the home page looks like. There's quite a few sections here. Um, it looks really good. Uh, and you can also take a look at the other pages that will come with this template. So it has an about page, uh, it has a services page, a project page, and a contact page. Now keep in mind, you can change anything on this template once you've actually imported it into your website. So I think we're gonna go with this one right here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to come down to this button that says import complete site. We're going to click on it and it may ask you to fill out some information here, but I believe you can actually skip this just by clicking this button. And the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we have all of these checked because we want to import literally the entire template into our own website. We want everything on this template. So just make sure you have all of these checked except for the first one. And then we'll click on import. So this may take a couple minutes, so we'll catch back up here in a second. All right, so the template was imported successfully. So now let's go ahead and click on the view site button. And as you can see, we have a fully built website on our own website, websitemakers.com in just a matter of minutes. And all of this is fully customizable. So it really takes out the hard work of building a website and it saves you a ton of time. So let's go ahead and click through just to show you that these other pages are loaded as well and they are functioning as they should. So there's our about page. We have our services page here as well. 
Um, everything looks really cool. And let's take a look at our contact page too. So here's our contact page. We got a nice map here that's interactive. So it does look like our contact form here is broken, which we'll have to go in and fix. But other than that, the website looks great. And we can now go in and actually start customizing this and changing some of the colors, the text, uh, anything we want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to change the logo here at the top left. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on customize. And now that we're in the customizer settings, we can go ahead and click on this icon right here. This is going to allow us to change this specific part of the website. So now we're going to go in and we're going to click on change logo. And now we can just drag and drop our logo into the file uploader here. And once that's there, you can just click on select and you can crop it. So we'll get the full image there and then just click on crop image. And once that's done, it's going to put it on your website just like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to change the site title here which is the text that appears at the top. So if we were to actually go to our website, the site title is this text right here. So our site title is website makers and our tagline is just another WordPress site. Let's go back into the customized settings here and let's go down to site title. And let's just call this San Diego roofing. All right, and now for our tagline, Let's just call this best local roofing service in San Diego, California. So now that we've changed all that, we just want to make sure that we save our changes. So we're going to come up to where it says publish and we'll click on it. And now if we go back to our website here and we click on refresh, as you can see, it changed our site title. It also changed our tagline. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're actually going to change this little icon right here. So right now it's just the WordPress logo, but we want to change that so it matches the theme of our website or just our brand or our business. And this is what's known as the favicon. So we're going to go back into the customized settings and we'll go ahead and scroll down here where it says site icon. Now we're going to click on select site icon and then we're going to go to upload files. And then we'll just go ahead and drag and drop the file into the uploader. And once you've got your favicon uploaded, just go ahead and click select. And just like that, we have changed the site icon of our website. And it gives you a little preview of it right here. So again, once you've finished making any changes in the theme customizer, you want to make sure that you click on publish. And once you're done making all of these changes, we can go ahead and exit out. And I have to say that looks really nice. We've gotten rid of that WordPress logo and we've changed the title of our website to match our business. All right, so now we're gonna actually start customizing some of the text, colors, images, and just the rest of the content on the website. And to do this, we're actually gonna be using Elementor. So from your website, you wanna go up to the top and we're going to click on edit with Elementor. And this is going to reload the website with the Elementor page builder here on the left side. So to start off, let's go ahead and change this title text here. We're just going to go ahead and click on it and you can just backspace it and enter any text you want. So let's say San Diego. And you could actually customize this text even further if you wanted to. So if you wanted to bold it or change the color of the text, you can do that in here, but we're going to leave it white. I think that looks really clean. Um, also, if you wanted to like bold the text or change the size of it, you can do that here as well. So we'll leave it as it is and we'll go ahead and click out of this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this text above it. So let's go ahead and click on this text box and we'll go ahead and change this to say voted number one best local roofing service. And that way it just kind of adds a little bit of credibility to our website. And I think I might actually increase the size of this text just a little bit. So let's go into the style tab. And as you can see, it's actually not white. It's kind of a, a light gray color, which is fine. We can leave it as that. So we'll go into typography settings and we could just adjust the slider to change the size of this text. 
So let's make it about, do about 16. I know that's not a huge difference, uh, but I think that looks good right there. All right, so now let's say you wanted to change the text of this button. Literally, all you have to do is click on it and then go here where the text is and you could say get a paid estimate. Uh, obviously, we're not going to do that because we want business. So we're going to we're going to leave it at get a free estimate. So that looks good right there. You could do the same thing with this one. This is also a button. It doesn't have a border around it like this one. Uh, but it is a button, and if you click on it, it'll take you somewhere else. Let's go ahead and move on to this next section here, which appears to be an address. We obviously want that to match the location of our business, so let's just go ahead and change this to say San Diego, California. And that looks pretty good right there. So if you wanted to quickly preview uh, your changes, you can actually hide the Elementor side panel here just by clicking this button. And it gives you a pretty good idea of what the website actually looks like. We've just made a few slight changes, uh, but it actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and open up the side panel again. And let's quickly go ahead and update our website just so that we're saving these changes as we go along. All right, so now we can move on to the next section here. And this one says your hometown roofing services provider. I think I'm going to change this text just so that it says something about San Diego in it, which is actually going to help us appear in search results. And that way we have a nice little section here with a new keyword relating to San Diego roofing. And again, if you wanted to change any of this text, you just click on it and make the changes. But this is kind of some filler text that we're going to just leave alone. Um, but we can go ahead and change this phone number here. Let's just click on the box here. And we can go in and change this phone number. I'm just going to kind of change it up here a little bit. Nothing crazy. Obviously, don't dial this number. It's probably not legit. But this is just to give you an example of what you can do. And you could also change the title of this text here. So we could say uh, 48 hours a day emergency roofing service or pretty much anything you want. All right. So moving right along. Let's say we didn't like the order that these were in. We could actually just click and drag to replace them. And then we can go in and we can just manually change the number order of this. So this way we have residential roofing first and then we have commercial roofing second. And obviously you could do the same thing with these two if you wanted to. Now the other thing I'll show you how to do is actually change one of these images. So if you didn't like one at all, all you have to do is click on the column that the image is in. Then we're going to go up to style. And as you can see, there's the image right there. So that just tells us that we're, we're in the right area. Now we're going to click on choose image and we're going to go to upload files. And then we're just going to click and drag the image we want. So we'll go ahead and click on insert media. And just like that, we've changed the image of this section. So again, you just want to make sure that you're saving your changes as you make them. So we'll click on the update button here. And now we can move right along to the next section. We can change anything we want in here. We can actually even change the order of them if we wanted to. So we could change this to be over here. It's going to mess it up for a minute, but we just click and drag the other one right there. And that fixes it. We could go in and add some text. We'll go ahead and change this to say special offers and if you wanted to you could change the icon here to anything you want we'll change it to the double tags and that looks pretty good right there and if you want to make changes to the rest of these sections just follow those same steps and you can pretty much change anything you want on this page all right so now i'm going to show you how to add new sections to your website in case the starter template you chose didn't come with a section you were really hoping to have on your website. So we're going to start off by going over to our about us page. And then we're going to go ahead and load up Elementor. And once this is loaded, let's go ahead and scroll down and find where we actually want to add a new section. So I think I want to add a new one right below this video here. So to do that, we're going to go where this blue box is and we're going to click on add section. 
And this is going to add a new section right above it. As you can see, it's right in between these. And now we have three options. We can either add a new section from scratch, we can add a template, or we can add a starter template. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Elementor templates. Now Elementor has their own set of templates that you can import into your website. And you have the option to import either an entire page like we did earlier, or you can just import a small section or what's also known as a block. So we're gonna do a block. And then over here on the left side, we can sort by category. So let's say we're looking for an FAQ section. We can find one here. Uh, but I think because this is an about us page, I wanna add something uh, team related. So let's come on down to team. And I'm looking for something that we can add kind of like some images of maybe some employees or something like that. Uh, so I like this image right here or this section. We can go ahead and click on it to preview it. And if we like it, we can go ahead and click on insert. And just like that, we've added this section right into our website here and it looks pretty nice. So now we could go in and we could actually change these images uh, so that it's actually somebody different. Um, we could add in this girl. She probably won't fit here, but this just gives you an idea of what you can do. You can add literally any image you want. Now, if you do add a new section like this, you just want to make sure that you're keeping all these style settings for the text and the images and everything consistent. So I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily change this text to match some of the other text that we have on the site here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to this title. Um, actually we'll come up here to this one right here. So all you have to do is click on this box here to make sure that you have it selected and then we're going to right click it and we're going to click on copy. So once you've copied it, we're going to come back down right here and we're just going to right click on this heading and we'll click on paste style. And just like that, it's going to copy those style settings from the other heading and it's going to add it right to this one right here. So now we can go in and we can change this text to say anything we want. So we could say our team, we could call it our employees, uh, pretty much make it anything you want. And the other thing we'll do here is we'll actually increase the size of the text just a little bit. So let's go to the style tab, click on typography, and we'll just increase the size. But the main reason for doing that copy settings thing it's just to make sure that the font is the same because, you know, if you have five different fonts on your website, it's really going to start looking just really bad. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping everything consistent. So once you've made those changes and you're finished, go ahead and click on update. And then we can go back and we can click on view page. So now if we scroll down here, we see our brand new section imported right into our website. Now notice there's a little bit more space here at the top uh, than there is at the bottom. Let's say we want to kind of tighten things up a little bit. Let's go back into the Elementor page builder and we're gonna go ahead and scroll back down to that section. The main issue that's causing this much space at the top is not this section here, it's actually the section above it. So let's go ahead and scroll up to this one and we'll go ahead and get into the settings for this section. So now let's scroll down. That way we can see what we're working with. And let's go into the advanced tab. And this is where you actually change the spacing of your sections. And we actually have two ways of doing this. We can either change the margin, which is space outside of the section or you can change the padding, which is gonna be space inside of that section. So we're adding space in here. So notice how we were already at like 100 something. Let's go ahead and dial that back just a little bit and we'll watch as this section below it just creeps right on up. So now if we hide the side panel here, that looks a little better. Things have tightened up quite a bit and we don't have that huge amount of white space in between these two sections. So I like that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and click on update. 
And now we can go back and we can click on view page. So let's go ahead and scroll down one more time. And that looks a whole lot better than it did before. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to actually hide or delete a page that was included with your starter template. So for instance, let's say we wanted to completely get rid of this projects page. Let's go ahead and click on it to see what it looks like again. So this is the projects page. And if we didn't want this to actually appear on our website, what we could do is we could come up here to the customize button and we're going to go down to menus and then we'll click on primary menu. And this is the primary menu right here. This is how people are going to navigate throughout your website. And if you wanted to hide a page or just completely get rid of a page off of this menu, all you have to do is come to this customize option here, and then we'll go to the page that you want to delete. And then we can just click on remove. And just like that, we've gotten rid of that page. So then we can just click on publish. We can exit out. So now people can't actually get to it from the menu here at the top. So now we're going to go and we're going to start customizing the contact page. So let's go ahead and click on over there and let's scroll down here. So notice how our contact form here is messed up. And for some reason it's not showing, there should be a contact form here. Uh, I'll show you how to fix that. So let's go into the Elementor page builder and let's scroll down to the contact form. So it looks like it's having trouble loading it. So let's go ahead and click on this icon here and notice how the widget is called WP forms. This is correct. That's fine. We're not going to mess with that. The only thing we're going to mess with here is this drop down box. This is where you're going to go to actually choose the form that you want to display in the box here. And by installing that starter template, they already created the form for us. We just have to select it. So just by clicking the contact form here, it's going to put it right here for us. And just like that, we fixed it. So now all you have to do is click update. So just like before, we can go in and we can change this text. We can do the same thing for this here. And again, we can change the phone number to anything we want. Now, the last thing we're actually going to do on this page is we're going to change where this map is actually showing. So right now it's actually showing New York City. The cool thing about this map is you can actually interact with it. It's basically Google Maps integrated right onto your website. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this so that it shows somewhere in San Diego. So we're going to click on the blue box here just to make sure that we're in the settings for the map. And then we're going to come up here to the location and we're going to type in San Diego. Now, if you have a business and you want to point people directly to your business, Obviously you want to put in the full address of your business, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to put in San Diego because I don't want to point people to a specific place. So yeah, we're just putting in San Diego here and you can actually change these settings. So if you wanted to zoom in a little further, so you get more of a street by street view, you can do that or you can zoom out even further it'll show you kind of more of a, a broader area to look at. So let's go ahead and keep this at about 18. Actually, we'll, we'll dial it back to about 16. I think this is a good, a good range to be. The other thing you can do is you can adjust the height here. So if you want your map to be a little bigger on your page, you can do that. And we'll just increase this a little more and we can hide our panel here to get a better idea of what this looks like, or you can actually make it even smaller. Um, I probably wouldn't do this. I would probably keep it, uh, somewhere around here. I think this is a good spot. So yeah, that's how you change the map. So if you own a business, I definitely recommend using this feature. Um, it's just going to help you rank better in search results as well. And it's just going to help people find your business. So I definitely recommend doing this. As always, 
make sure you're updating to save your progress. So now that we're done, we can go back and we can click on view page. And our contact form is now fixed and our maps are now updated to show San Diego and our contact page looks pretty good. So one of the last things I'm going to show you guys how to do is just change some of the back end settings for WordPress and your website. So to start, notice how our website is showing the contact page as websitemakers.com slash question mark page ID 169. Personally, I don't think that looks very clean. I would much rather have it show websitemakers.com slash contact or websitemakers.com slash services. So I'm gonna show you how to quickly change this to actually display the name of the page that uh, the website visitor is actually on. So let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard uh, just by clicking this. I already have a tab open here, so I'm just gonna open it like this. And now go down to settings, and we're gonna go down to permalinks. Now this is where you can actually change how that URL is actually displayed for people. So currently we have it set it up as plain, uh, but we actually wanna change it to post name. So once you've clicked on post name, go ahead and come down and click save changes. And it'll say permalink structure updated. Now if we come back to our website and let's just refresh the page. And just like that, we've changed it. So now it displays the actual name of the page that you're on. And it says websitemakers.com slash contact us. So now if we go to the services page, it'll say services, about us page, so on and so forth. Now the only page it's not gonna do that to is your home page. And that's because there's no need for it to display the name of that page. Now I'm gonna show you another important setting you'll want to change after you've actually completed your website. So let's go back into the dashboard and then under the settings tab, we're going to go down to reading. Now under the reading settings, you'll want to make sure that the search engine visibility is unchecked. If this is checked, it's going to keep search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing from actually pinging your website and basically allowing it to show in search results. So if you have this checked, your website's probably never gonna show up in search results. So make sure that after you've completely finished your website and you're ready for people to actually start visiting it, that you have this unchecked. So if this is unchecked, you're good. So once you've made those changes, click save, you're done. So this is actually the end of my free WordPress course. I really hope that you guys found this course useful. I've actually got another WordPress course that you guys can check out probably be giving out a few coupon codes so that some of you guys can get in for free if you want so if you're interested check that out i'll have a link somewhere down below also if you guys did find this course helpful i would really appreciate if you just left a nice review it helps me figure out where i can improve on in my courses so if you have any type of feedback i would greatly appreciate it if you guys have any other questions you can reach out to me on udemy uh, I also have a YouTube channel, which I'll have linked somewhere on my profile. Um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And I hope to see some of your own websites here in the future.